Hello, I'm Dr. Ron England, and I'm recording this video for COP3530, which is data structures. And this is one of the earliest uh, parts of data structures where we're going to implement a linked list in JavaScript. I know a lot of students struggle with learning the JavaScript language while they're also trying to learn how the data structures work. We're going to try to get through a little bit of that, and I'm going to take you through some real code of how to do this. I'm doing my work in JS Fiddle. Um, JS Fiddle is a relatively easy to use online environment for doing JavaScript programming. And if you look here, I've created a, a spot for my output, which is just simply a paragraph, which is some HTML. And then in my JavaScript window, I've got where I create the linked list. So let's look at that. Well, before I create the linked list, let's go down and look at how I actually instantiate the linked list. So I'm going to pop to the bottom of the code here, and um, I'm going to create uh, this LL variable, which is a new linked list. Notice I don't pass anything over to the function. I'm going to add a node. I'm going to add another node. I'm going to add a third node. And then I'm going to output the entire thing, which I have a function that I wrote that makes it all convert to a string, to the output window. And if you notice, I have the output, which says I have a linked list with three nodes. And I, I show you the nodes with the value and then the next node value, because in this linked list, each node points to the next node. That's the whole concept of, the, of the, this is a singly linked list where each node points to the next node. So that's how I actually instantiate this, but let's look at the code where I actually implement the linked list. So let's start with this. Uh, here's my JavaScript. I tried, there's, there, I got some, looked at a lot of different implementations of this, and I think there's quite a few that are more elegant, but I wanted one that was simple and easy to understand, and that's actually what I'm doing right here. So. I defined the variable linked list to be equal to a function. And if you know anything about JavaScript, everything is an object. And by defining the linked list as a function, I actually create an object that is the linked list that is encompassed with this function. And I have two properties right off the bat that I defined, the head and the tail, which I set to null. So thinking about a linked list, when I first build it, it's got a head, it's got a tail, and they're both they're both null because I haven't assigned them to anything yet. Then I have inside of the linked list function, which basically means this is going to be a function inside a function, I also create this linked list node. Now this function I actually pass it some content because remember the point of the linked list is that each node holds some data. And this is the data I called content here that it does. And so what I do is I do two things here. When I create this new linked list node, I set the next of the node, which is going to be the node that's after it. Remember, each node points to another node, the next node. And I set that equal to null, because right now it doesn't point to anything. And I set the content of the linked list node to be equal to the content that I just passed over to the function. So the node has two properties, next, which is a pointer to the next node, and the content, which is the data that it contains. Hey, not too bad there. Now I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here so you can kind of see this um, pretty straightforward. I now am going to define another function, this dot add, which will look like a property of the linked list. But actually what it is, it's a function. And it's going to be the function that I called down here where I said, hey, I created the linked list and then I added nodes with the content being passed in the add. And here's what it actually does. Here's where I define inside of the linked list function this other function called add with the content passed to it. And I do three things. If the head is null, it's an empty linked list, you're going to create, you're going to say that the head is equal to this new linked list node with the content, and you're done. If there is a head but no tail, well, now you've got to define the tail. So if the tail is equal to null, and the head wasn't equal to null because it would have stopped here if it was, you're going to set the tail to be equal to the new linked list node, and you're going to set the next of the head to be equal to the tail. Right, the head points to the tail, and I'm going to return that. Now, if the head isn't null, 
and the tail isn't null, that means you've got both a head and a tail, you're going to have to add a new tail onto it and make the old tail be in the middle. So how do I do that? Well, I set this.tail.next. I set the one after the tail to be equal to the new node. Okay. Then I set I make the that new node be equal to the tail. And then I set that new tail that I've created, which is the new node I just created. It now has to point to nothing because it's now the new tail. So it points to null. And I'm done. So when I do this, what happens is uh, when I actually do the call of this, I am able to say, hey, look, you know, I created this um, new linked list. I add one, it becomes the head. I add the second one, it becomes the tail. I add the third one, it gets tacked onto the tail and becomes the new tail, and the second one is pointed back at the tail. And then I can see, you can see the output how that works. Node when I'm done, node one, it's got the value of the head. The next node is the is the second node. And node 2, the, the value is the second node, and the next node is the last node. And then 3, okay, it's the last node, and the next node is the null. And that's the values that I passed over here. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit into um, some of the things that I added on for this, um, for the display of this. I added a prototype function called length. Okay, prototype functions. What the heck is that? Well, I've defined this thing called a linked list. And you'll see that there's plenty of objects that are predefined in, in JavaScript. You can add on new functions. You can create new methods and functions for those objects. And you do that through this thing called the prototype. So all I really did is I added a new method or new functions, the same thing, which is also the same thing as an object because in JavaScript they're all the same thing, called length. And all I did is I went to, I set, I set a node to be equal to the first node, and I just counted and set each node to be the next node, and I just counted until I got to the end. And in this case, there were three. I did the same thing in this uh, little prototype to string. By the way, to string is just a handy way of saying, you know what, if you create something and you want to be able to output it nicely to a screen, the way you can do that is define a to string function of that object so that it will output as a string nicely. And that allows me to down here in the very bottom to be able to say, hey, document, get element by ID, what, uh, and that's the, where I'm going to output it to, and say ll to string, and that gives you some nice output here. But this prototype thing allows you to tack on these functions as a member of the object after you've already defined the object, which by the way, can come in really handy if somebody passes you some predefined objects and you want to add methods to them, but you don't want to modify the code of the object. You just do this and it works. So hopefully this gets you guys ready to rock and roll with linked lists and being able to actually build some of these data structures in JavaScript. It's not that hard to do. Um, you know, JavaScript language has got some nuances that are sometimes tricky to learn, but it's all doable. So um, have fun, good programming, and do your best.